These transformations have to do with the base graph of x cubed. So here's the base graph for y equals x cubed and here's the key points that are labeled here. 1, 1, 2, 8 it goes through, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, and negative 8 are the key points that are on this one. It also, of course, goes through 0, 0. What we have going on here is I have, uh, we have 2, a movement of 2 to the right because you've got a minus 2 there, you move it opposite direction to the right. We're going to move it down one unit, but we also have a negative on the outside, which means that we're going to be flipping it. That's going to be a flip over this direction, over the x-axis. Let's start with the, the movement first. We're going to move it two places to the right, and we're going to move it down one unit. Okay, so two places to the right and down one unit means that this is going to be my, my new zero, zero. Normally my zero, zero is here. Instead, I got shifted over to that position. So now that the movement is complete, I want to draw in the graph. So the negative here, that's going to be a flip, and it's a flip over x direction, so it's going to be flipping down this way. So this dotted line I'm going to draw in here, this is what the flipped graph is going to look like. So it looks just like this. So I want to make this dotted line graph appear right here. Okay, so when I do that, first of all, I want to get these points on here. So normally I would go one to the right and up one unit if I was on the regular graph with no flips, but because it isn't a dotted line, I'm going to go one to the right and then I'm going to go down one unit. I'm going to do that from the starting point. One to the right and down one unit means it's going to be right here. If I want to go up this direction, I'm going to go up one and one to the left. So instead of going down one to the left, I'm going to go up one to the left to get this point corresponding on my model. So up one and one to the left. It's from here. Up one, one to the left is going to be this dot right there. If I keep on going this way to get the next point, from here to get to this point, now normally I would go two places to the right and up eight, but because it's flipped, I've got to go to the left and up eight because this point is actually reflected here. So I go two to the left, up eight. So from here, from the starting point, I'm gonna go over one, over one more, and I'm gonna go uh, up eight. So here's my starting point right here. I'm gonna go over two and up eight. So here's my starting point, one, two this way, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right here, that is my, that's, a, that's actually the place where it crosses the y-axis, that's my y-intercept. If I want to get the same point down here, from the starting point here, I would go two to the right, and I would go down eight this way to get the other one down below. So for this point, I'm, here's my starting point, I go two places over to the right, and then down eight from here. So I already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means that my point would end up being right here. My graph is going to look like this. My x-intercept, it crosses at one. X-intercept is one and my y-intercept is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now let's take a look at this next example. Now the next example, we have another one that's not written in the right form. So for this, again, in order to use transformation rules, you want to make sure that your x comes first and there's nothing in front of it. So the first thing I need to do is put this into the proper form. I'm going to switch positions and I have a negative here and this will be a plus two. Everything else is going to stay the same. But again, I have an extra negative in front of the x that I don't want. So I'm going to have to do two sets of parentheses. One set of parentheses is this big one on the outside. It's everything being raised to the power of three. The inside one is going to be when I factor out the negative. If I factor out a negative, that's going to switch the signs of each of these. And so what will happen is I get positive x and then minus two those are the parentheses on the inside. So here's the ones on the outside for the cube, and then here's the ones on the inside. So what is this saying to do? It says move the graph two places to the right and down one unit, and then we're going to do a flip. Now this time the negative happens to be on the inside. Well, we have a, an interesting thing that happens with this particular graph. If I flip the graph down like this, I got that dotted line as a result. If I flip the graph this direction, notice that I also get exactly the same result. 
So the graph that I've already done over here, that's actually going to be the same as this graph uh, that I, that this, for this equation here. Again, the negative, we have the same flip, or the same flip that's happening because if I go this way or this way, I get exactly the same graph, so it's going to have to go in the same direction as that one. My movement is exactly the same too. I go two places to the right and down one, same as I did originally, so that's why these graphs are both the same. Now we can show this algebraically that we should, it should be the same because what I can do is I can actually break this down and do negative one cubed and then I can do x minus two cubed. So I, I can basically break up both things inside. That's like a negative one inside there. So I can take both of these raised to the power of three. Now negative one cubed, that's gonna still give me a negative as a result. Any negative to an odd power, the negative remains there. I get x minus 2 cubed and then I have minus 1. Look familiar? Yeah, it's the same as the original one that we have in part A. So that verifies now that th this equation and that one are exactly identical, identical which means that the graph is going to have to look exactly the same as well.